The Mutual Broadcasting System proudly presents Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. District Attorney, transcribed, starring Jay Justin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. And it shall be my duty as District Attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law, all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. In just a moment, Mr. District Attorney, but first... While a great deal has been done about improving our schools, our educational system, particularly at the elementary levels, still show serious deficiencies in many areas. The reason for the inadequacy of many of our schools is the flood of increased enrollments. Between 1953 and 1960, we may expect one and a half million more pupils each year. It's a statistical certainty that this rise in school population will heighten the already critical shortages in school rooms, staff personnel, and transportation unless action is taken now. By taking an interest in our schools, we can help make sure that our towns get the best possible schools for the money expended. Good schools are vital factors in maintaining both prosperity and a high social level for the area in which they are located, as well as contributing to the prosperity and security of the nation. So, if you're a parent or interested citizen, why don't you see what you can do? Join and work with your local school board or any civic group that is trying to meet this problem. Education molds our future. Better schools build a stronger America. This message is brought to you as a public service. And now the Mutual Broadcasting System invites you to listen to Mr. District Attorney. Two men are meeting in an expensive residential hotel on the outskirts of Paris, France. One is Melvin Renshaw, American sportsman, social leader, and lawyer. The other is his only client, Rocky Ritano, multimillionaire racketeer, deported by the United States Justice Department two years previously. Okay, Renshaw, so it's not a permanent visa. It's a passport, ain't it? It'll get me back into the States, won't it? Only for six months, Rocky. That's long enough. All I want to do is get rid of Lenny and Floss on the narcotics end and... Uh, take care of Lomazzo, trying to horn in. The immigration boys are smart, Rocky. All we can alter in this passport is the picture. You'll have to bleach your hair and grow a mustache to come anywhere near the description. So in Paris, they got the best beauty parlors in the world. And I got a month to grow the mustache. Very well. You can sail on the Queen from Cherbourg on the 18th of next month. I'm flying home tomorrow. Right. Oh, uh, and by the way, I assume that uh, you're expecting to stay with us while you're in town. My wife uh, will be delighted to have you as our guest. She, uh, say so? Well, frankly, no. But she doesn't have to. Now tell her. When do I get the passport? I have it with me. Say, you got gotten cute or something? Come on, let's have it. It's made out in the name of Lebrecht. Henri Lebrecht. Perhaps uh, you'd better learn to pronounce it. Never mind the comedy cracks, gimme. Getting back into the States means a lot to you, doesn't it, Rocky? Yeah, yeah. Let me have the passport. Let me see. You'll net at least a million on the narcotics deal alone. Then you have at least that much still on deposit under assumed names. Okay, Rancho, quit stalling. What's the bite this time? The bite? Oh, yes. Your lamentable lapses into the vernacular must be excused. However, Rocky, the uh, bite, as you so quaintly put it, is $100,000. Just let me have it in cash. Checks are so easily traced. <laughs> It's nice to see my favorite court reporter back. And Thanks. nice of you to drop up here to the office and say hello. How was Europe? Oh, Europe is terrific. <laughs> Especially Paris. <laughs> hey, you picked up a cold, huh? No, a butte. You better take care of it. I am. 
to uh, district attorneys ever eat cough drops? Hmm? Here, have one. No, no, thanks. Made in France? Yes. Pour la malaise de la gorge. You know, it's amazing the way everybody in France speaks French, yes. even the kids. <laughs> Any sensational cases while I was away? No, not a thing new. I believe you're familiar with the situation on the waterfront. Well, that reminds me. Yeah, uh, what? Funny thing, I ran across a guy on the Queen coming back that I can't get out of my mind. Yeah? His name was Lebrec. Lebrec? Henri Lebrec. Oh, should I know him? I don't know. I got a feeling I should. Mm -hmm. Like trying to remember the name of a tune. I've got the craziest notion I've seen him somewhere before, somewhere important. Like the rogues gallery. <laughs> Yeah, I got back today. Give me a news, will you? Yeah, sure thing, Mr. Jansen. Here you are. Thanks. <laughs> Boy, Mr. Jansen, you sure got a cold. Yeah, you said it. I'm trying to figure mm -hmm. if I should take it home or take it to the fight tonight. <laughs> Where's the sports page in this rag? And... Ah, here it is. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Melvin Renshaw has been made chairman of the boxing commission. <laughs> they sure must have been hard up. Hey. What, Mr. Jansen? Melvin Renshaw. Rocky Rotano shyster lawyer. Johnny, I remember now. Remember what? I remember the face. Here, Johnny, keep the change. I'm going to make a fast call on the chairman of the boxing commission. Who knows? I might get into a fight myself. <laughs> Melvin, please. Oh, no, I don't want to argue about it. I will not have Rocky Rotano in my house. Shut up. He'll hear you. Well, I won't. It may be your house, but Rocky bought it. He's paid for everything we've got. He's my only client, and he's staying with us for as long as he's in town. Now, go get yourself another headache, or go to bed, or go to... Go somewhere. Melvin, I... I know you don't love me, but that man in the same house as the child Catherine's age is... Well, surely as a mother, I'm entitled to some consideration. Listen, Mona, everything you're entitled to, you've got. You've got me and this house. You wanted security, you've got it. I wanted your respectability. Now, if you expect to continue to live this way, I suggest that you make our guests stay pleasant. Yes. Wally Jansen, Associated News. Well? Mind if I come in? I'm afraid I'm busy. Oh. <coughs> I got a terrible cold. I think I must have caught it on A deck of the Queen Elizabeth. Um, uh, come in. Thanks. Come into my den. We can talk quietly in there. Okay. Uh, nice home you've got here. Thanks. In here. Thank you. All right, Jensen. What's on your mind? I'm in a hurry. Renshaw, I've got a crazy notion. A guy named Henri Lebrec had the cabin across from me on the Lizzie. Get to the point. Oh, I've got a crazy notion his name wasn't really Lebrec. That's all? I think it was Rotano. Rocky Rotano. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Your picture in the paper reminded me that you're his lawyer. It also reminded me who Henri Lebrecht looked like. Where is he, Renshaw? Hiding him in a closet someplace? Mr. Rotano is in Paris. He was deported. You know that as well as I do. Oh, but he's back, isn't he? Back to reorganize the rackets. Back to straighten out a few things. Jack the rough boys up a bit. Tighten up the waterfront. Am I right? Jansen, you're a good reporter. 
It's unfortunate that you can't have a longer career. Oh, now, Glenshaw, no gun. I'll get Hopalong Cassidy after you. Do that. In the meantime, I'll get somebody after you. Somebody who really knows how. Rocky, come in here, will you? I always say it's silly to beat around the bush. Don't you, Jensen? Oh, so he is here. Yes. But the information won't be of much use to you. It will be to the DA's office. He's a friend of mine. Oh? A very close friend. I'm glad you told me. I heard somebody at the door, so I was staying in my room and said... Oh. Bravo. His name is Jensen, Rocky. Wally Jensen. Associated News. Cabin 29A. He was on the Queen. Small world, isn't it, Rocky? Yeah. Too small. For you, not for me. Rocky, you did pretty well. Bleached hair, mustache. Too bad the guy across the hall had to be a close friend. Friend, George, is it dark yet? In an hour. Give me your gun. Yeah. Get the car out quick. Right. Jansen, I've been working for months to re-enter the USA. I'm real fond of this country. Well, it's too bad it's mutual. No, I can't let anything spoil it. I want you to know I got nothing against you personally. I'm relieved to hear that. Smart, aren't you? Jansen, it's too bad. I'm sorry, but uh, I got news for you. You're gonna die. Turn at Brand Street, Renshaw. Turn out into Pier 13. I'm glad you aren't superstitious, Rocky, but let's get this over with. What are you going to do? You'll see. Listen, Rocky, this has gone far enough. You can't get away with this. The DA knows about Lebrecht. Yeah? Well, he won't be around to print the story, and by that time, I'll be out of the country. Just don't plan on leaving without me. I don't want to be left holding the bag. You're on your own from now on, Renshaw. If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't be in this jam. Okay, newsboy, get out. All right, Rocky, I'm telling you. The DA's office is waiting for something like this. He's my friend. He'll never stop till he gets you. All right. Start walking. Turn around, face the water. Now, Rocky, don't do it. Too bad. Kind of a nice guy, too. We'll return to Mr. District Attorney in just a moment. Some like it hot with the fierce clash of man's war against crime. And some like it cold with the dedicated purpose of a vigilant fight against evil. And some like it with a touch of the unknown, flavored with a hint of the weird and the unusual. But practically everybody likes a good mystery. For all lovers of the eerie and the mysterious, Mutual brings program to suit any preference. There's Counter Spy, the spine-tingling exploits of David Harding and his everlasting battle to preserve our country's security. High Adventure stars the hero, George Sanders, and dramatizes thrilling moments from the lives and places of peril throughout the world. While Bulldog Drummond presents the suave and sophisticated private detective, played by Sir Cedric Hardwick. And with his own unique brand of hair-raising narration, Peter Lorre brings you Nightmare, featuring tales of the unexplainable. With great stars and great shows, you can't go wrong when you dial Mutual for Mystery. Walk hand-in-hand hand with suspense, danger, and intrigue. Hear Counter Spy, High Adventure, Bulldog Drummond, and Nightmare every week over most of these stations. Now back to Mr. District Attorney and the case of setup for re-entry. I can't believe it. I just can't believe that anybody had killed Wally Jensen. Well, somebody has, Miss Miller. Yeah, when's the autopsy due, Chief? Two hours and there'll be an official report. Hey, Harrington, we've got to crack this. But who would do it, Chief? Wally Jensen didn't have an enemy in the world. All court reporters have enemies, Miss Miller. Where did they find him? On some rocks under the pilings of Pier 13, oh. near the old brewer's warehouse. Yeah. Who was on the waterfront, Pete? O'Brien found him. He heard shots and went down to the pier to investigate. He heard Jansen moaning. By the time O'Brien fished him out of the water, he was dead. Well, didn't he 
Didn't he say anything? Well, he mumbled something about the rocks. I tell you, I'll get whoever did this. It was the last thing I do. This sort of thing makes me as mad as, as a rookie on his first beat with a gang war going on in the back alley. Jansen was a good reporter and a good friend. He never did a mean thing in his life. Oh, I'll get that, Chief. Yes, Ruth. Who? You mean uh, Johnny the newsboy at the corner? Mm -hmm. Well, tell him we're busy to make it some other time, huh? Information about Jansen. What's that? All right, send Johnny in. Our amateur detective at the corner newsstand has a clue. Uh, Johnny's done a lot of Wally Jansen. Yes, we all do. Yes, come in, Johnny. Hello, Mr. Harrington. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Hope I'm not disturbing you. Well, Johnny, we are pretty busy. What's on your mind? Well, sir, I've got some information I think the district attorney's office ought to have. Yes, all right. Shoot. Well, yesterday, Mr. Jansen bought a paper from me, see? Yes. Yeah. Flips real quick to the sports page, and there's a picture, see? A picture of whom? The guy that was made head of the boxing commission, Renshaw. Renshaw? Melvin Renshaw? That's right, Chief. Well, what's the connection? Yeah, go on, Johnny. Go on. Well, then Wally said something about... About Rocky Ritano, shyster lawyer. Rocky Ritano. Yes, anything else? Oh, yes, sir. I think Wally went to see him. Renshaw? Yes, sir. To his house? Well, he, he didn't say. Rocky Ritano. The biggest gangster the crime commission flushed out of hiding. Yeah, yeah, but, Chief, he was deported. Two years ago. Well, it's, it's fantastic, and yet... No, no, he'd never get by immigration. Not in a thousand years. No, well, Harrington, we have only one little clue, but I intend to make a case out of it. We're going up to pay an informal call on Melvin Renshaw. Right, would you, Chief? Somehow, Rocky Rattano is back in the USA. That's the way I want it. Yeah, I'm at Renshaw's now. Yeah, he's right here. The meeting's tonight. Ten o'clock in the Brewer's Warehouse I own, near Pier 13. Have some liquor and food sent over first. I want everybody comfortable. Yeah. Real comfortable. Okay. You think Floss and Lamazo will turn up, Rocky? Uh, well, if they know what's good for them. I can hear them trembling from here. Yeah, trying to remember the double crosses. Figuring because I was in Paris, I wouldn't know. Brother. You better take it easy. Why? <laughs> you still worrying about that reporter? Oh, I think the warehouse is a bad place for a meeting. His body will be 20 miles out into the ocean by now. The channel current is fast. Just the same. You better take it easy. I'll take it easy, all right. But six Thompson submachine guns. That's how I'll take it easy. <laughs> That's Renshaw's house there, Harrington. Yeah, it's a big white one, Chief. Mm -hmm. Built and paid for on legal fees from Rocky Ritano. No decent lawyer would handle his affairs. Say, wait a minute. What? What's here? Here, here on the sidewalk. This. Well, what's that? An empty cough drop package. Paul Amelie's de la Gorge. So what's that? Say, this was Wally Jansen's. Come on. You don't really think Ritano will be in the house, do you, Chief? Well, if he is, he'll be sorry. Someday we'll nail the goons behind him, too. The ones that weren't deported. Yes? Oh, you must be Mrs. Renshaw, hmm? Yes, I am. Now, is your husband at home? I'm sorry he's out. Then I'd like to talk to you. I'm sorry I haven't time. You'll have to excuse me. I'm afraid I can't excuse you, Mrs. Renshaw. Here's my identification. I'm the district attorney. <laughs> Please stop asking me questions. I'm not well, and I'm very nervous, and I can't tell you anything. Rocky Rattano is back, isn't he? I don't know. Now, please, leave me alone. He's been here. No. But you've seen him, haven't you? Tell me. <gasps> yes, yes. Now, stop it and leave me alone. Dear God, I wish I was dead. I have no friends, and nobody cares whether I live or die. Your little girl loves you. She <laughs> cares. And we're your friends. That's right, Mrs. Renshaw. Where is he, Mrs. Renshaw? No, I, I can't. 
They'd kill me. Now, Mrs. Renshaw, if you tell us, I promise you that I'll take care of you. I'll put you and your little girl on the 20th floor of the Broadmoor Hospital and keep two policemen outside your door day and night. Only you've got to help us. Do, do you mean that? You promise? On my word as district attorney. Well, oh, they're, they're having some sort of meeting. Yes. Tonight at 10. There's several of them. I don't know how many. Where? I listened on my extension upstairs. The Brewer's Warehouse on Pier 13 on the South River. You clear on everything, Harrington? Right, Chief. I want every one of them. Preferably alive. But if necessary, dead. Now, here. Here's a map of Pier 13 and the streets around it. And the sound truck will be here. Right. Uh, the red circles indicate searchlight squads, Chief. Right. I'll be here with a walkie-talkie. I have two police boats in the river channel just in case they try to get away by water. Right. Okay. Let's get going. See you later, Miss Miller. See me later? Yes. What do you mean? Well, what I say? Good night. Chief, the only way you can keep me off Pier 13 tonight is to fire me. <laughs> be a lot cleaner when tonight's over. That's Harrington. Yes, Harrington? Road barricade on Branch Street. Okay, Chief. Check. Police boats? Police boats 14 DR 6 and 7, station mid-channel, opposite Pier 13. Tear gas? Guns issued. Others in position? Baird and Evans at the rear of the warehouse. Good shelter behind northeast corner of the building. Everything set. Everybody in position. Okay. Not a move until I give the signal. Now, we settle down and wait. Yes, but not for long. It's after ten. Oh, oh this is going to be a beaut. Now stay in the shadow of the fence, Miss Miller. Oh, sorry, Chief. I wish there wasn't so much moon. Yes, Harrington? Black sedan just past the road barricade on Brant Street, Chief. Okay, Harrington. We'll wait until the next car passes. Are they coming? Yes. Listen. Our first guest. Mm -hmm. Keep your fingers crossed. Right. And stay in the shadows. These men are killers. Can you see? Five of them going into the warehouse. Yes, Harrington? Second car passing Brant Street Barricade, Chief. Mm -hmm. Green Cadillac. Five men. Ten of them. Rocky Rotano's whole mob. Ready with the searchlights, Harrington. Ten, fifteen thousand waters. Harrington. Chief. When I switch off, Connect my mic into the loudspeakers on the sound truck. Check. And just remember the Thompson submachine guns fire 600 bullets a minute. Be careful. Right. Okay, I'm switching off. Give them the lights in five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Why, Chief, it, it, it's like daylight. All right, Ritano. You're surrounded. Come out with your hands up. All of you. The warehouse is surrounded. The pier is covered by police boats. Come out with your hands up. Chief, I'm wait, come... Wait, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Turn to Mr. District Attorney in just a minute. If you're a teenager or older, you can play a vital part in the defense of our country. How? By joining the Ground Observer Corps. The Ground Observers have been set up to supplement the radar defenses of our country. Due to the way radar operates, there are gaps in it that can only be eliminated by human watchers. Now, if we are not to be caught unprepared, we must act now. The Ground Observers are located on the east and west coasts and in the northern Middle West. Now, when the ground observer system is extended to the rest of the country, 300,000 more volunteers will be needed. Their training and time on duty are supervised by officers and airmen of the Air Defense Command. All Americans from teenage up are eligible to become sky watchers. No matter where you live, a bombing attack would affect you. If Los Angeles, Chicago, or New York were attacked, it would affect every farmer in North Dakota and miner in Montana. So why don't you join the ground observer corps? 
Write or telephone your nearest Civil Defense Center or write to the Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington, D.C. This message is brought to you as a public service. Back now to Mr. District Attorney and the payoff in today's case history of waterfront crime. Set up for re-entry. Poor cops killed. So help me, every one of those guys will get the chair. Fellas, stay back. Miss Harrington, he's coming over. Uh, right under their guns, he's coming over. Fool, what's the matter with him? Is he gone crazy? They hit the sound truck and broke the equipment. I wasn't receiving you. And I'll try the police boat. Police boat 14, DR6. Can you hear me? He's not receiving you. Oh, they couldn't have gotten the boats, could they, Harrington? No, they were firing away from the water. Police boat DR6, not receiving you. Give them the tear gas guns. Sound two blasts on your whistle if you receive and understand this order. Over. Oh, what's the matter with that police boat? Can't they do something with their equipment? Mm. See, there, there's their whistle. They hurt you. Yes. Yeah. Well, there are the tear gas guns. That'll bring them out driving crazy. Burn their eyes black. Gee, look. What? What is it? Over there, a, a man coming there. out of the warehouse. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, that's Rocky. Rocky Rotano. He's coming this way. Keep quiet, quiet. Gee, gee, don't be crazy. That man's a killer. Uh, I've been waiting for this. Watch me, Harrington. Maybe you can get his gun. Try and get me, copper. He's trying to get away. Oh, gee, you can't fight him with your bare feet. That's the way I want it. Okay, Rocky. Uh, and there's another one for Wally Jensen. Uh, it's gone, Harrington. He's dropped it. Yeah, I got it. What's the matter, Rocky? Don't like fighting with your fists, eh? Uh, Listen, I, I, I'll, I'll pay off. I'll pay off. Uh, pay me for Wally Jensen's life. Uh, there isn't that much dough in the world. Chief, uh, are you all right? Yes, I never felt better in my life. Going to come on out of the warehouse. It's over. All right, get Rocky out of the water, Harrington. That's the fish I'm going to fry personally. In a moment, a final report from Mr. District Attorney. There's something in the air, something new in Mutual's air. Star names in the stellar productions are adding their shine to the glittering roster of outstanding entertainment on your Mutual station. Such famous luminaries as Madeline Carroll, Arlene Francis, and Betty Clooney bring you programs that run the gamut from serious drama to gay humor to popular music. And that's not all, not by far. There are Sir Cedric Hardwick, Peter Laurie, David Ross, Duncan Hines, Edward Arnold, Jay Justin, and George Sanders as well. So many stars, it's almost breathtaking. And you'll find the kind of programming they bring you is breathtakingly different, too. Their shows on Mutual are new in many ways. You'll find they add a brand new slant to your concepts of entertainment. But that's not all, either. Your own favorite time-tested stories and characters are not neglected. Some of the most famous fiction creations that ever saw the light of day bring you their ever-popular kinds of listening pleasure. Remember, it's your mutual station that has something different. Stay tuned throughout the day, throughout the week, and hear for yourself over most of these same stations. Ladies and gentlemen, every member of the Ritano gang was captured. As a result, one of the most vicious narcotic springs in the country was broken. Rocky was convicted and sent to the electric chair for Wally Jansen's murder, leaving Mrs. Renshaw free at last to bring up her little daughter in dignity and security. The names of all characters in this transcribed dramatization are fictitious, and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Jostin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. Mr. District Attorney was produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Harry Junkin, and directed by Leslie Harris. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lohr. Ed Ladd speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.